do gummy probiotics actually work? At first glance, that might sound like too broad a question. After all, there are so many different types of gummy probiotics out there, right? Actually, not really. While the packaging and extra ingredients might vary, nearly all gummy probiotics rely on just two types of bacteria, Bacillus coagulans and Bacillus subtilis. Why only those two? Let's break it down. Traditional probiotics, the kind that you find in capsules, powders, or tablets, are made by growing bacteria, freeze-drying them into powder, and sealing them up in a moisture-free form that keeps the bacteria alive until you're ready to take them. This method helps preserve the delicate bacteria so they survive storage and make it to your gut. But gummies? That's a whole different story. To make a gummy, manufacturers heat sugar or corn syrup with gelatin or pectin, then pour the hot mixture into molds before it cools into that familiar chewy candy. The problem is that heat and moisture are terrible for most probiotic bacteria, especially the more common ones like Lactobacillus or Bifidobacterium. These strains aren't able to survive the gummy making process. One study even showed that Lactobacillus put into a gummy lost nearly all its potent potency after just 5 days at 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. Even when refrigerated, most of the bacteria were dead by the end of the month. By the way, I review a lot of supplements here, so subscribe and hit the bell to stay updated. And support me on coffee if you enjoy the content. This is where Bacillus coagulans and Bacillus subtilis come in. They're what's known as spore-forming probiotics, meaning they form protective spores that help them survive harsh conditions like heat, moisture, and acids. Not all spore-forming probiotics can handle the tough gummy-making process, but those two can, which is why they're used in almost every gummy probiotic on the market. In fact, gummies made with Bacillus coagulans have been shown to stay stable for up to 24 months on the shelf. Sometimes you'll see gummies that try to include other probiotics, but unless they've developed some new cutting-edge stabilization method, those extra strains probably won't be alive or effective by the time you eat the gummy. So, what can Bacillus coagulans and Bacillus subtilis actually do for you? Let's start with Bacillus coagulans, also known as Hyandrixia coagulans. Research suggests it may be helpful for constipation. In one study, people with mild constipation who took just 1 billion CFUs daily had more regular and comfortable bowel movements than those taking a placebo. It's also been studied for diarrhea, especially in people with irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS. In clinical trials, people with IBS who took 2 billion CFUs daily had fewer diarrhea symptoms and some even saw improvements in bloating and abdominal pain. Higher doses, around 6 billion CFUs a day, may even help with IBS-related issues like headaches and anxiety. Beyond digestion, the evidence for Bacillus coagulans is more limited but still interesting. Some research suggests it may slightly reduce cold symptoms in children. It may also ease pain in adults with rheumatoid arthritis when taken alongside medication, and help reduce inflammation in people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD. Now let's look at Bacillus subtilis. It's also been studied for diarrhea, and while the improvements are modest, people who took it reported better stool consistency and less frequent trips to the bathroom. Its biggest strength seems to be in preventing diarrhea caused by antibiotic use. When people took 2 billion CFUs of Bacillus subtilis while on antibiotics, they were less likely to experience diarrhea as a side effect. There's also research on a specific probiotic blend called Medilac S, which combines Bacillus subtilis with another probiotic called Enterococcus facium. Studies suggest this combo might help people with ulcerative colitis achieve remission when added to standard treatment. It may also reduce the risk of pneumonia in critically ill patients on ventilators and shorten hospital stays for those with mild acute pancreatitis. So both Bacillus coagulans and Bacillus subtilis are spore-forming probiotics known to support gut health. They have been linked to potential relief from issues like constipation, diarrhea, bloating, and even heartburn in some people. So does that mean taking these probiotics in gummy form can offer the same benefits? Not exactly. Most of the scientific evidence we have on probiotics comes from studies using traditional delivery methods, capsules, powders, or fermented foods. 
not gummies. For instance, a large review of studies in children found that probiotics in capsule form reduced the risk of antibiotic-associated diarrhea by about half. Another analysis showed that probiotics modestly lowered the chances of getting upper respiratory tract infections compared to a placebo. But again, these benefits were seen with capsules and powders, not gummy candy. When it comes to gummy probiotics specifically, human studies are rare. One small trial gave undernourished infants a lactobacillus plantarum gummy and saw slight improvements in weight and gut markers. Another study gave healthy adults a gummy with bacillus coagulin spores and found that the bacteria was able to survive digestion and stayed in the gut for weeks. These results show that certain probiotics can survive in gummy form and make it to the gut, but they don't prove that gummies can actually treat common issues like IBS or constipation. So while it's possible that gummies might offer some benefits, we just don't have strong evidence to say for sure. Most of the well-established benefits we associate with probiotics are tied to more traditional delivery forms, not gummies. Traditional formats like capsules, powders, fermented foods, and even suppositories are simply better studied and more effective overall. Capsules, especially those with delayed release or enteric coatings, are one of the best options. They can protect the probiotics from harsh stomach acid and deliver a higher number of live bacteria to the intestines. Capsules also tend to offer a wider variety of strains than other formats. Powders and sachets provide flexible dosing and can be mixed with food or drinks, which is helpful for people who don't like swallowing pills. However, powder probiotics are more vulnerable to moisture and oxygen, and their survival through the stomach can be hit or miss. Fermented foods like yogurt, kefir, and kimchi provide probiotics in a natural food-based form. They also come with other beneficial nutrients like vitamins or prebiotics, but the number of live probiotics you get from these foods can vary widely depending on how they're made, stored, and consumed. Suppositories, mainly used for vaginal health, offer targeted delivery and are effective at restoring healthy bacteria directly where it's needed. Research suggests they can work better than oral probiotics for certain vaginal conditions. So when it comes to gummy probiotics, the reality is not quite as tasty. The heat, moisture, and sugar involved in making gummies create a tough environment for most probiotics to survive. That's why only two tough spore-forming strains, Bacillus coagulans and Bacillus subtilis, are suitable for this format. Other strains like Lactobacillus can't handle the production process or don't last long enough in the gummy to still be effective by the time you eat it. Even chewable probiotic tablets struggle with some of the same problems. Compression of the tablets during manufacturing reduces the live bacteria counts, and ingredients used to improve taste can increase moisture, which harms probiotic survival. On top of all that, gummy probiotics often contain added sugar or corn syrup and tend to deliver fewer colony-forming units than capsules or powders. So while gummy probiotics may sound appealing and convenient, they're currently an unproven and less effective option compared to traditional probiotic forms. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to share them in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you know someone who could benefit from this, please share it with them. Finally, if you enjoy what we do and want to learn more, consider supporting us on Coffee, and be sure to check out our other socials as well.